David Williams with Jesus Ministries. May the Lord prosper all of you who are faithful in Christ Jesus. Okay, so quick, uh, quick talk. There we go. Quick talk. Um, uh, and it's going to involve all three topics. And if the Lord permits, we're going to transition from one topic to the next topic to the next topic without intentionally making a connection. So it's not my intent to make an, to make a connection between the one topic and the other topic, but it'll likely correlate because the things that the title is going to be, the, the things that we're going to be talking about came one right after the other. So even if what is mentioned, I don't make a correlation, hopefully it'll correlate. So you have the scare tactics as a topic, you have manipulation, and then of course you have witchcraft, and that'll be the last thing that we talk about tonight on this recording. So scare tactic, a scare, a scare tactic is described or can be described as when as a method of making a person believe that they are in danger when they are not in danger so there's a so there's a difference between a scare tactic and a warning when someone is employing a scare tactic then they're trying to make you feel afraid when there's nothing to be afraid of, all right? So if an advertising agency is trying to get you to buy something, if they want you to buy something, they have to make you think that you need it. And they also have to make you think that it would be a foolish decision for you not to buy what it is that they're offering you. So if someone's trying to sell you health insurance or health care coverage, then they would have to make you think that you're going to benefit from this coverage. And if you deny the coverage, then they may say something to the effect of, oh, you don't want to be healthy? Oh, you don't want your family to be safe? Uh, why would you try to ignore what we're offering? So scare tactics describe methods of provoking or stimulating the, the sense of fear. When you feel afraid, when someone's making you to feel afraid, but yet there's nothing to fear, but yet there's nothing to fear. So that's a scare tactic. You call it a scare tactic because it's simply a way of getting you to feel as though you are in danger, but you're actually not in danger. When you are warned, that describes being made aware that you are in danger and that you are in position to suffer. That's what a warning is. A warning is when you are made aware, you are given the knowledge that you are about to suffer. You are about to experience pain. If you keep doing what you're doing or if you, if you stand where you're standing or if you associate with these people, then this will be an experience that you're going to have. And so when you're warning someone, it's, it describes you explaining to them, revealing to them, that they are in they are in legitimate danger and the warning is going to be consistent with the danger they are they are about to face so there's a difference between scare, trying to scare someone and trying to warn someone when we preach about hell you're not trying to scare people telling people that there is a place of permanent suffering after death is not a scare tactic. Describing the judgments of God and the fact that he, God, punishes the 
wicked, but blesses the righteous. The fact that God does that, explaining that to people is not a scare tactic. It is a warning. And so when you are warning people, you are letting them know what's up ahead. You are letting them know what they are going to experience and you're letting them know that that the experience is not going to be pleasant. It's going to be painful. Preaching about hell is not a scare tactic. Preaching about judgment is not a scare tactic. Those are warnings. Those are warnings. So there's a difference, a major difference between scare tactics and warnings. Manipulation. Manipulation describes when someone is controlling what you are saying or what you are doing, yet they don't have the right to control what you are saying and what you are doing. It is an illegal use of power over someone else. When you can get a person to act in a way that you have no right to cause, when you can cause a person to act a way that you don't have right to cause them, then you are manipulating them. When you are trying to get someone to do something that you don't have the right to get them, that you don't have the right to do that. And I'll figure out how to word that in a second, God, God willing. Uh, if you are trying to control someone's behavior, yet you don't have the right to control their behavior, you are manipulating them. If you are trying to get someone to support something, yet you have no right to try to get them to support that thing, you are manipulating them. If you are intelligent, if you are an effective communicator, or if you are articulate, if you know how to use your emotions to bring about certain experiences or instances. If you can control what happens, yet you don't have the right to control what happens, then you are manipulating someone. The word manipulation simply means being able to control something. But when we are referring to human relationships, when we are referring to the human relationships and human interaction, manipulation describes being controlled by someone who has no right to control you. When someone has no right to control you, yet they are controlling you, you are being manipulated. You are also being manipulated when someone is trying to get you to do something that you're not supposed to do. So, there are things that you are supposed to do. Someone could use a bad method of getting you to do something that you are supposed to do. So you are supposed to do this thing right here. Someone, someone could try to, someone could use the wrong method to get you to do something that you are supposed to do. Someone could threaten your... Uh, so transitioning from scare tactics to manipulation. Let's say you owe a phone service, a phone carrier, $500. You own, you own this phone carrier, $500. So they've given your case over to a collection agency. And the agency calls you and the representative is loud or he's condescending, he's speaking in a disrespectful way, he's sounding, he's making all kinds of threats. He's trying to get you to pay his company the money that you owe his company because his company picked up the case from another company. So this, so, The person may be threatening to, to, to cause you some sense of loss when they actually can't cause you that sense of loss. They actually can't do what they're telling you. 
that they that they that they could do. So they're using a scare tactic and they're trying to get you to do something that you should do. You should pay the people that you owe. But the company that's forcefully trying to get you to do that doesn't have the right to use that method to get you to do something that you're supposed to do. So someone could use the wrong method of getting you to do something that you're supposed to do, or someone could be trying to get you to do something that you're not supposed to do. So they could either be in a corrupt way trying to get you to make the right decision, or they could be using a, a method to get you to do the wrong thing. Whether they're trying to get you to do the right thing, if they're trying to get you to do the right thing, they've got to use the right methods in order to get you to do the right thing. That You can't use the wrong mes methods in order to get someone to do the right thing. And you can't try to get someone to do something that you don't have the right to control. So if you don't have the right to tell this person this thing, yet you're telling this person this thing, you are in a sense trying to manipulate them. So that's that. Scare tactics are methods of controlling people, making them believe that they are in danger when they are not actually in danger. Manipulation describes being controlled by an illegal source, an unauthorized source, or being influenced to do something that you're not supposed to do. So that's what manipulation describes. When something is leading you to do something that you're not supposed to do, that's manipulation. I mean, you're either using wrong methods to control someone or you're trying to get them to do the wrong thing. That's manipulation. Third thing is witchcraft. So witchcraft, uh, there are many witches that we have to address, face, and confront. And a witch is someone who is using illegal power the, the, the witch is using spiritual power that they don't have the right to use because Satan does talk to man. So he teaches man how to do things that man isn't supposed to do. He's, he teaches man laws that man isn't supposed to employ or apply. That's what happened in the Garden of Eden. So Satan tries to get people to use power they're not authorized to use. Satan tries to get people to use methods of control that they're not authorized to use. So Satan is trying to teach man how to control his world by wrong methods which cause man to be separated from God. Witchcraft describes trying to cause a person to, to witchcraft describes and, and well, let's focus on, be, uh, let's focus on uh, a witch. What is a witch? Uh, what is a Jezebel kind of attitude or identity in the church of God, in the church of God? There are people who think things should be a certain way. They think things should be a certain way. And so they discover laws or rules that allow them to do certain things. Well, this rule says I can do this. Yes, but that other rule says you can't. Yeah, well, I don't want to submit to that rule. I don't think that rule applies to me. That rule doesn't apply to me. That has nothing to do with me. 
I want this, and this law gives me off authority. This law gives me authority to get this. And so there are witches in the churches. There are witches in our society. And they're trying to give off this, this sense of confidence. Now, let's talk about confidence in reference to witchcraft. When we... Confidence should be the result of finding something that's true, finding something that's real. Confidence, you're supposed to feel a sense of sureness and security because you know that you are in, in position to be blessed, to, to be promoted to be protected, to prosper. When you sense that you are in position to prosper, when you sense that you are in right standing with God, you should feel secure in that, in your relationship with God. You should feel happy. You should feel sure of what it is that you're saying because you know that what you're saying, you know that what you're saying comes from God. So, Confidence is supposed to be the result of understanding that you are safe in God because you are doing what God is telling you to do. There are witches, there are people that have a sense, they look confident, they appear to be confident, they appear to, they appear to be secure, they give off the sense that they're that they're right that that they know what it takes to prosper that they are doing what it takes to prosper they are doing what it takes to to be protected they're doing they have peace oh i'm sure of myself so there are people among us who are doing the wrong things, yet they have a sense, they have an attitude or a body position that says, I'm very confident. And that confidence makes those around them think that they are right. When you act as though you are right, people will think that you are right. People who don't know the truth will think that you're right because you are acting as though you're right. And when you confidently affirm that you are right and you are making decisions that are consistent with your perspective, when you believe that you're right and you're acting as though you're right and you've got this appearance of, of security and courage and you and you seem as though you know exactly what you're talking about there are people that are going to believe you there are people that are going to believe that you know what you're talking about even though you don't and there are people around us that are trying to make us think that they know what they're talking about even though the word of god condemns the, th the things that they're saying and doing and you have many people, who, especially now that social media is so expansive and pervasive and extensive because everybody can talk to everyone anytime. There is an increased, there's an increasingly, uh, there, there's a greater measure of false prophets and liars among us. So, but they're confident. The Bible says the fool rages and is confident. They, they are sure about, and many times they're not sure, but they act as though they are sure. And I, I've been in situations where I've had to confront demon spirits that were possessing a person's body. And the spirits like to act as though they are in control up to the very point that they have to be they have to leave the person 
up to the very point that they have to actually leave the person, they act as though they're in control. They're, they'll, they'll, they'll laugh. They'll laugh. They'll shrug their shoulders. They'll look away as if to say, I'm not leaving this person. I don't have to leave. I'm in control. Nothing that you're saying matters. Your prayers don't matter. They act like that. They act like that up to the very point that they are driven out of the individual. To the very, up to the very point when they scream in terror as they're being thrown into the dry places by the Spirit of God and by the angels he sends. They act absolutely confident. They act indignant. I'm in control. You're not in control. I don't have to leave this person. I'm in control. And, and they, again, they, they may joke. They may mock. They may mock what you're doing. Up to the very moment that they have to be driven out, you, you'd think that they would show a greater sense of fear. There are people who are doing things that they're not supposed to do, but they have no sense of fear. They don't, they don't sense that they're going to suffer for their actions. And that makes it seem like they, they're right. He must be right. She must be right. Look at how confident he is. He thinks he's going to prosper. He thinks he's going to succeed. Maybe he is going to succeed. He seems a lot surer in his way than, than, than I feel. He seems as though he feels confident or sure of his success. I don't feel sure of my success. Maybe he's right and I'm wrong. Maybe I should go to him for advice. Well, the witch is trying to get people to disregard, overlook, and ignore the order of God and the will of God. And the witch is trying to make people feel as though he or she has found a way to live that will lead to success and peace. And the witch is trying to get others to apply those methods of living. I'm this way. I don't go to church. You don't have to go to church. You don't have to listen to any man. It's interesting that men will say that you, that you shouldn't listen to man. That's an absolute, uh, uh, it's a farce. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's, it has no place. It's, it's, it's an absolute contradiction. Why would a person tell another person that, 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 that they don't have to listen to a person? Well, if I don't have to listen to people, you're stating a truth as you think it. You, you are stating a truth. You're telling me I don't have to listen to people and you're a person. You person are telling me as a person that people shouldn't listen to people. Why then am I listening to you and why do you feel the need to tell me that if I ought not listen to people? So witches are trying to get people to disobey God, thinking that they'll succeed if they employ, if they employ this, this way of living. Live this way and it'll benefit you. Don't listen to that. So we have to be mindful of the expectation of God. We have to be mindful of the expectation of God. We have to understand the will of God. And we need the grace of God to, to apply the will of God because we are being threatened even though there's nothing to be afraid of if you are being obedient to Jesus. We are being we are being we, we are facing manipulation the enemy through people and by other kinds of methods of spiritual communication the enemy is trying to make us think that we have to do this over here when actually we're supposed to be doing that over there and he's saying it with confidence and he's saying it repetitively uh, through his various channels of communication and there are false prophets among us and there are going to be false prophets among us. And the amount of false prophets is going to increase. And they're going to be pretending as though what they are saying is accurate. And they're going to be saying it with confidence and boldness. 
That's why we have to spend time with the Lord Jesus Christ in prayer. Because A, he's good and his mercy endures forever. And B, because he loves us. He has the right to talk to us. The Lord does not try to scare us. God is not trying to scare you. He's warning you. God warns his sons. He tells us that the wages and the, the punishment of our, of our sins is death. Hey, listen, I love you. Don't do that over there. It'll cause this. God sets order in our lives and tells us that if we obey that order, that we're going to benefit. God loves us enough to tell us those things. Uh, Jesus Christ is not trying to scare us. Jesus Christ is not manipulating us because he's the master of heaven and earth and has the right to tell you what he's telling you. And Jesus Christ promised by his spirit that he would give us pastors after his own heart. So Jesus is not trying to scare you. He's trying to warn you. Jesus is in control of everything. And so he has the right to say whatever he has to say. And Jesus promised to give us pastors after his own heart. And so witchcraft is not something that we uh, want to be subject to. And I know it's one thing to say that, but it's another thing to understand how it works and to be able to discern when it's being worked against your life, whether your own emotions are manipulating you because you don't have a right to be controlled by your emotions, nor do you have a right to be controlled by the emotions of anyone else. So it doesn't, that's not the will of God. Your emotions didn't create you. You didn't create yourself. God created you, so only he has the right to tell you right from wrong, up from down. So your confidence should come from the fact that you are living a life that God describes in his word as prosperous. A life God will bless. You don't get to ignore his expectations over there. Because you say, well, those people are ignoring his expectations. So you say, the word of God says, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. If God has to save eight people and kill 14 billion, he will save eight people and kill 14 billion. He's done it before. And in a different way, he's going to do it again. So we need to understand the love of God, the goodness of God, the purpose of God. He's not hiding. God is not hiding. He's telling you what he wants and how he wants it. And he's giving you his spirit so that you can get it done. Obey his voice. If you obey his voice, then you're going to see his face and you're going to see his hand move in your life. This is your brother David Williams with Jesus Ministries and God willing we will talk within the next 24 hours.